I just bought this 1980 International Scout 2. They're getting pretty hard to find in decent shape, which this one is. But this happens to be pretty rare. Actually, ultra rare, because it's powered by an SD33T, which is a Nissan turbo diesel, and it's backed by a four speed. It's rumored to be one of the most rarest in all of the land. I don't know. Anyway, it's been sitting out on a farm for 18 years. I'm gonna try to get it running and drive it all the way from Western North Dakota to Wisconsin, 600 miles. Seems fine. Nope, but I got a cool seat cover. So like I was saying, a local farmer rancher owns this rig. He thinks he bought it somewhere in 0203. We'll try to figure that out. Drove it for just a little bit of time and parked her up. Instead of laying in the tall grass there, we went ahead and loaded her up on the trailer. Drug it in the town here to my brother's place. At least here the roof only leaks a little bit and there's some sort of concrete. A broken, uneven, and cuts your back a lot. Still better than tall grass, kind of. So let's, uh, I don't know. Let's just take a look, walk around this thing, drink it up. I'd like to try to get in the back, see if we got any engine parts, stuff like that. Pretend it's a trunk, you know. Get in the inside and figure out how to pop this hood. I think it goes this way. Suicide hood? No, only doors. Maybe hood, not sure. Alexa! Is there a suicide hood? Derek, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> So unfortunately, I don't have a ton of history on this rig other than when the feller I got it from, he bought it out of Montana. But I haven't been able to find anything past that so far. But it definitely wasn't in the rusty states. I mean, it has rust, but nothing like Wisconsin or Michigan or Iowa, states like that. So I would assume it's probably been in Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota all its life. Every panel is dented somehow. Except maybe this door. That's unfortunate. There you can see the diesel badges. But to be honest, this paint about has the absolute perfect patina. I'm already thinking about some shine juice or maybe even polishing it. But it's got a lot of characteristics that are just hard to duplicate on. Some sort of aftermarket bumperage, electrotronic digital stuff. She's been rigged up for kind of an off-road hunting kind of deal she's got a push bar on it i would assume this went right to the battery you can jump late some stuff it's got some i don't know what these are big old kc lights i guess block heater that's four dollars in value got a longhorn thing that's super crispy no hail damage or anything like that windshield took a heck of a dinger I don't know. Yeah, that's probably a rock, something like that. Roof is in pretty good shape. Again, no big dents up here, which is great. Usually you see these knocked in along this ridge. And that's really hard to fix. As far as rust down below, nice big dent there. That's got some rust in it. This rocker is pretty near shot. Thankfully, it's full of sand and mud keep her nice and solid right now door doesn't shut very good that's dented in but not rusty oddly enough over here on this side looking pretty good a little bit of rust there this rocker is in much better condition a little bit of rust there but this is easily fixable just a little patch here Something like that. By the way, look at that, just my thumb on that paint. Look at that. This thing will shine up pretty easy. These tires, I already did the date code on them. They were 2003, so that's when the tires were put on. So that's kind of a clue as to when it was parked. Plates seem to be missing right now. Well, let's see if we can get in back here. This is going to sound weird. This particular rig 
came with not one ignition stick, but one and a half. And I got a title for it. I think this is what we need for this. Here. But she seems to be stuck. Just start off by bending things, you know? It's fine. Oh. These, can you lock them? Oh. Yeah, that's a good design. Maybe we could shoot some juice on these real quick. Try to get them. That'll be nice. That works equally as good. Oh, the hinges completely rotted out. Pretend we didn't see that. Well, here's what we got. Some sort of jug with 13 different types of mold on it. Some really nice ball valves. You don't need one, get three in a row. Must have been a serious job. Whole bunch of hydraulic hoses, vacuum canister. I see a charging whirler, so that's either missing and or bad. That's fine. And I'm not sure why you would put a bag of softener salt into the back of your vehicle. That is probably, yep, yeah, that's rotting right through the floor. Really excited to see what's underneath that. Wheel well, it's got a little bit of rust around there. Not quite sure on that one yet. Oh yeah, wow. Okay, I'll just put that back. That seems fine, but you know, it's just bad. That's good. We're gonna see how bad it is underneath here. Oh, it's gone. There is absolutely Nothing left. There's a, a big hole. Hindsight being 914, maybe we should have just left it. Doing this way out of order, but whether this runs or not, guy's gonna hang on to it, being it's so collectible. So, Maz will run the old Mouth Sucker 500 through her right now. Get all this cleaned up while we're back here, and then I'm gonna show you this rust hole. It's it's there. It's 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 impressive. That's what I'm saying. You can see that bag of salt. Was it really laying here or up there? It's right there, kind of region. And unfortunately, it just completely ruined this floor. You can actually even see the leaf spring and everything right there. So I'm gonna do the right thing and just, you know, do this. There we go. We'll top her off with a little repair. That's fixed. Well, I'm already sweating. That's wrong. Let's jump into the cab, see what we got going on. I'm hoping the miles are just down there, but it's unlikely, very. These doors are actually really neat. They don't have the, you know, there's usually a here. This one doesn't. It's too bad they don't open very good. We'll get some juice on these too. See if we can bring it around. This seat cover is just delightful. Is this a rifle holder? It is. With or without the mouse poop, this seat cover is just, it makes the whole purchase worth it. There we go. And we got a rifle holder at the ready. Down here we can see nine of 1980, International Harvester Company. It's pretty cool. Like I was saying earlier, this rocker is just, she's down quite a bit. Pedal wear. It's not a lot on the brake or the throttle. I can see that this has been welded though. They must have rode their foot on this pretty good, but these two aren't showing a ton of miles, so that's kind of exciting. 
And it says it has 13171. Could that be 113 or 213? We've got a completely worn out seat. Steering wheel is not too bad. Armrest, decent. Pedals, mm, I don't know. You guys bleep bloop it down there. Is this 113 or 213? I would sure like it to be 113, but it's probably not. Do we have any info here? No oil changes in 1995. That doesn't help us much. Temp, oil, amp, fuel. We've got a tape player. Jensen, we're gonna try that out right away. And an equalizer. Tan Craddy. Well, Feller didn't like to party much. I don't see a lot of bass or treble, but that's okay. That's okay. We got some sort of aftermarket's cup holder. Of course, you got the four speed there, four wheel drive. She's got tilt on it. Pretty loaded up, actually. We got some buttons down here. I'm assuming one of these must be those lights up front. Don't know what the other one is. Engine stop. That's where the diesel glow plug there. We got, uh, I think this is the throttle. Yep. Watch the throttle. So like in the winter, if you want to idle it up, you can just run that out there. It's too bad about the door cards. I think that's just from sitting out. I bet they were in pretty decent shape, but this was sitting in some really tall grass and that carries a lot of moisture and stuff like that. Oh, here's some plates. Yeah, there we go, 2002 Montana. So that lines up with what the feller was saying. He said he bought it in 2002. And then he must have put the tires on it in 2003 and that was it. What do we got back here? Pioneer Boom Booms, both sides and they're wired. We got old coat cup, Chevy hub capillator. Some really old receipt with the side punchers on it. This seat, speaking of seats, is in immaculate condition. Thing looks brand new. Oh, truck stop. Cold snack holder, just self tap to the wall. That's approved. We got one over here? We do. Oh, that was blue even. Maybe that's a original unit and that's an aftermarket. I don't know. I don't know how that works. But that's really it under here. There's just, you know, it's pretty basic. It's kind of like a Jeep, you know? Well, let's pop the power barn. Hopefully that Nissan diesel's still in there and works and stuff. That'd be neat. Hmm. Here's the moment of truth. Did overpaying for this vehicle pay off? Yep, sure did. And there's the Turbski. You guys have been asking me for a long, long, very long time. When are you gonna do a diesel? Well, not only are we doing a diesel, but we're doing a Nissan in an International. This is really cool. First glance, it's rough, but all here. So the SD33 was kind of a commercial type engine. They put them in a lot of forklifts and marine and commercial applications, but International didn't have a diesel small enough to fit in here. So that's why they used the Nissan there in 79 and 80s. Just a very, very few of these were made. And this one is the SD33T, T's for turbo, and there she is. Just a little sushi slicer hanging out down there. Battery's gone, of course. Filter, very dirty. I mean, it's all very dirty. Zip ties everywhere. Really don't know what I'm looking at, but we're gonna figure it out. Ginormous brake booster. Not gonna hit the pedal yet, we'll wait for that. Looks like there's a bunch of vacuum lines unhooked. That one's rotten. I'm sure the mice have been in here, so we're gonna have to really pay attention to the wiring on this thing and the hoses. Check out this side. Should have the pump over here. 
Yeah, so here's the pump. That's freed. No issues there. So here's the ether system. There was that button in there. So this shoots some ether right around into the air filtration system. Gives her a little giggle gas and away you go. That must be the oil filter there. So, I mean, it's all here. I mean, it looks like it legitimately was just parked. We're just going to have to figure out why. I'm seeing a lot of miscellaneous, like, parts stores wiring crimps and clamps and loose wiring pretty much everywhere. So that is a little bit concerning, but we'll work our way through it. There you go. Originally an SD33T. Very cool. 100 horsepower at 3,800. Moses sandals, this thing must scoot. I don't like these mirrors. They're gonna have to go right away. Not the original ones. Here's the thing or two about a thing or three. This thing is just shoehorned in here. I wanted to put a ratchet on the crank and see if I can roll this thing over, but there's no room at all. So I think we're gonna go straight to just throwing a battery in it twist on the ignition stick and see what happens. I'll check the oil really quick. Other than that, I I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I guess we could see if there's any fuel to fuel gauge works. Throw this in here quick. Yep. Turned her forward. Now when we drop a battery in, we'll see what the old fuel gauge says. Yep. So this is the bad battery out of the Senex truck, but I like it because it's got a gold handle. It also says classic on it. Krang's been boiling this for the last half hour, so maybe it'll do something. I got some clamp later to the bolty posty adapter roonies I gotta throw on here. Cause these have the old eyelet hoses or wires or whatever, whatever those things are. Hips! Okay. Guys should always carry miscellaneous clamp laters. Oh, they're a little taunt. I'm gonna have to get my battery post application tool quick. That one's on. Oh, that one slid right on. He's gonna hook this up. We're gonna run a fire test. No sparkles, that's good. But just drink her in. Look for smoke, stuff like that. When rigs sit, especially out in fields and stuff, mice can get in the wires and make shorts. You can burn these rigs down quick. Are they getting hot or melty or anything? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he did go on ahead and throw that bad battery in there. So I'm going to turn the key and just hear it go click. And then we'll, you know, try to find some other battery or jump it with something, I guess. Better make sure she's a neutralist so we don't take the whole building down. Bring the thunder. Bring it again. Not even a click. I want to say I'm surprised, but no, not really. So this is weird. If I roll the key forward, fuel gauge goes all the way to empty. If I roll it to the ACK, it's a c c a c the extra when you roll it back position then it goes up to half or almost a three-quarter tank of bad diesel but forward it doesn't actually doesn't do anything so i'm thinking the tumbler or the ignition is busted and it's definitely not juice late in the system by the way Picked up an air freshener, but we're gonna wait to put that in until she officially runs. Oh, it oh did work. Oh my god. Did it work? Get a, yeah, get a bite down there and see if it works. Is this as seen on TV? Re liquidize. There you go. Are you licking it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, keep going. You're doing it. You just safety squint it. Okay, listen. Open your mouth really wide <laughs> and push. <laughs> well, the plot has a thickened more than Shakira's size. 
I got 12.4 V's right at the battery. I think this goes back to having instrumentations in the accelerator position, but not forward. I think that ignition tumbler or the rod or the switch, something's broken there. So we might have to get out the old Lone Wolf 6000 trigger. This little guy here has never let me down. Plus I don't have to carry work comp on it. <laughs> Spins over right now. Battery's dead. That's strange. Crane torqued these wing nuts on with the Tanya Harding here. Because when I loosened them, the whole rig was shaking. So, plan D, subsection four. Got this here boat battery that's covered in mud from uh, 2019. That's fine. Get this one out quick. Yep. I think we just found out the instrumentation delay on the old dash there. There's this burnt, crispy, melted wire wrapped in 14 layers of electrical tape with an end that's barely on that I see runs over to some sort of voltage regulator with Walmart crimp-on fittings. And I think this has got to have juice to do the things and the stuffs. So we're going to hook this up this time. Maybe the old key will work. I don't know. We're going to find out. Yep, it's easy. Craig's going to check the oil quick before we spin on this thing more. Brand new. Oh, ready to rock. So I think what a guy's going to do is just crank on it for a little bit and see if it builds a little oil pressure. We might crack the fuel rail there, see if we're getting fuel up to that. I'm sure the diesel in it is just rotten, but we're going to work with what we got right now. Smoking. Smoke? Look. Smoke. Good smoke. Oh. Oh, it's a tailpipe. So she's trying to fire actually already. It's not building any oil. Oh, you smell that? Good. This might actually just run. I'm going to just try to crank her one more time before we go to spray. There is a primer on here. I'll show you in a second, but we're nervous about priming it because there's some O-rings and stuff in there and she's going to be crispy. And if that breaks, we're out of commission because we're definitely not going to find that. Oh yeah, she definitely wants to run. I'm gonna just spritz her with a little huffing gas here. Spritz. I thought it was gonna idle. It fired. Very, very smoky, but it fired up. He's gonna spray it again here. I don't know if the glow plugs work, but I'm gonna reach in here and hold this button for 10 seconds. Let's try that. He's spraying it right now. It's already idling. I killed it. I don't want to run it too much longer with this bad oil in it. But that sounded pretty good. There was no banging or clanging or knocking or nothing. Oh, that's, that's really exciting. Now you could tell by the look on my face. I am pumped right now. This thing after sitting for 18 years, took four to five sprays of huffing gas, fired up, sat here and idled. You could definitely tell the diesel fuel is completely rotten. It smells terrible in here, like really, really bad. But I think at this point, we're gonna change the oil before we run this any longer, check the coolant, kind of fix some of these vacuum lines and things like that. And then we're gonna fire it back up and see if we can run this a little bit longer. 
See if all the gaskets and stuff do what they're supposed to do or if we get any leaks. The biggest one for me is the head gasket. Got to get some heat into that thing and see what happens. Then we'll move on to clutch. Do we have any gears? And last, very last, is brakes. I didn't get a chance to jump in there and check the oil pieces or anything like that. What we're going to do is just get her up in the air, change this oil quick, change the filter, and then we'll check like the rad juice and other stuff like that. And I got a couple vacuum lines over here to fix. One goes to the Terpski. And I think the other one is the gas recirculation valve solenoid thing or something like that. We shot some juice down in here on the throttle linkage because that was kind of sticking. Some sort of switch in here that the mouse ate the wires off. We won't worry about that. Right now, got to figure out if these horns work. Not sure. And we didn't try the E3 yet. We should try that also. Yeah, it's, I like they just slide these under and start jacking them. Eventually, they're going to hit something. Listen for a bend or a crack. If it's a bend, keep going. I'm still pretty near in shock about how easy this thing fired up. But that's one of the great things about diesels is they're so indestructible. And the fuel will pretty much run off of anything. And that fuel tank most likely isn't even rusty. Just different scientific properties and whatnot. So diesel fuel versus gasoline and yada yada. So it's going to be smoky and smell terrible, but it's going to run just fine-ish off of what's in here. If we get her on the road, one of the first stops will be the fuel station and drop some fresh, fresh agriculture grade diesel in this thing. Is this high enough? Oh yeah, she's higher than Willie Nelson. I do have a little rust here under the driver's floor. And this is a poor design. It's like a C channel, but the open channel is facing forward. So it just fills with mud and sand and whatever. But we got a hole here. There's a hole here, there's some more up here, a little crispy. So a couple things, one, I didn't jack up the wrong side, that was just for demonstration purposes only. Two, feet on the bench is the way to go, if you could pull that off. And five, I wonder what Vince Gill's doing. Crank said this oil is good and we're going to have to debate later. Is that a Muncie four-speed? Might be. I'm looking at it. Also, there's no muffler on this. She's straight piped. Probably going to have to put a chrome tip on it. Old Earl's out. This is where it's going to get messier than Murder, she wrote. This has a canister type filter. So there's a metal case and there's just an element that you stick inside of that. Rolling that off is just going to be oil everywhere, including the teeth. It does have a little drain in it, so I'm going to try to drain that first. I'm assuming and hoping we built some oil pressure there when it ran for a little bit, so it should be full. And then we'll swap that out, we'll put some fresh stuff in. Well, the guy did take my time, and I took some brake clean and rejuvenated the canister, got her nice and clean. Threw in a Wix filter, got that all buttoned up. Going to let her back down now. We'll throw some new Earl in her. And then, like I said, we got, we'll got we check on the ice cube juice and some other things. I'm like, excited to fire this thing back up and actually let it idle. See if we can bring it to temperature. And also see how bad the thermostat is stuck. Today's flavor is one of my favorite. The old Shell Rotella. T6, 1540. Heavy duty diesel oil. It actually really makes sense this time, but I actually also run this in my gas engine all the time. It's one of the last oils around that has all the dinosaurs, vitamins, and zinc still in it. Really great for flat tappet cams. And the best part is you don't have to pay all those really expensive prices of fancy race oil and stuff like that. That's, uh, Easy. Oh, it's already bad. This, yeah. It's busted. It's well, only on the bottom. <laughs> so 
I got the make it gooder up on the battery. We'll boil that just for good measure. Well, we got nothing in there as far as ice cube juice. Let me go find some, we'll try to top her off. Hopefully the lower rad hose or the radiator itself ain't leaking. So we ain't finding those parts. I never really knows what he's gonna get. I've worked on rigs that have sat for 30 years and had something in there. I've worked on some for just a couple of years and they're dry. I don't know why, that's just the way it is, I guess. I don't hear anything hitting the floor yet, but much too lazy to go look. So I'm just gonna keep dumping it in up here. Oh, now stuff's hitting the floor. I think it's from the top, not sure. We'll say it's full. Oh yeah. I wonder if a guy could go ahead and just fire it up now. Let her idle for a bit. Then we can get a light in here and Start looking for any leaks or anything not gooder, basically. Biggest one for me is the head gasket. Make sure that comes back around correctly. Oh, come on now. A little huffing gas. More lightning. You're up on 40. Oh, the lights are flickering. That's when you know it's real good. No idea if the glow plugs work, but I'm gonna try these out real quick. Bring the thunder. Bring it again. pressure. Oh, I got to roll the key all the way back. Say we got half gauge oil pressure. Don't know how many LBs that is, but seems to be in the middle. That's just fine. Kind of hard starting yet, but having just sat in the field of grass for 18 years, I think that's okay. Some fresh fuel and a new fuel filter might help bring that around a little bit more. Still chasing one down, haven't found one yet. Nothing on the injector line is leaking. We do have a little leak here. I think it's the fuel return line. Got this little fuel line off that was leaking. Sure enough, there is a hole in it. From that cable that it was zip tied to, just wobbled a hole right through her. Let's not do that again. We'll definitely put a zip tie on it though just because. There we go. Now we'll fire it back up and see if we got anything else going on. Oh yeah, I do have to fix that vacuum line super quick. Yeah. Oh, come on. Glow plugs seem to work, which is great. I replaced that line already. I just gotta move this clamp. And then this was unplugged. I used the handle and throttled her up a little bit. See if we can get it up to temperature. Oil pressure looks pretty good. It's charging. 
It says we've got three-quarter tank of fuel, but that seems pretty low. I'm not sure if that's even going to work. I'm going to snoop around and see if I can find where the beep looper is on the engine and make sure that that's connected and everything's good to the dash. The temp sending unit is right in the water neck. That looks fine. Still not circulating, but the gauge did move a little bit. So, a couple more minutes. Hopefully we can get this thing circulating and start looking for leaks. Well, we idled there for 15, 20 minutes, the old temp gauge. It stayed right in the middle in that operating range. Didn't see anything leaking. We think, well, we'll just assume. Great things happen when you assume. Thermostat's working. So everything's looking pretty good. I think at this point, we're gonna go ahead and change on the charging whirler belt, which also snips over and snags on the old PS, go left, go right selector belt. And then there's another belt that runs this vacuum pump thing that creates suckerization to the brake booster. We'll replace that too, because it looks more brittle than Bob Barker. But the downside is, how do you, you can't, your, aren't, your hands don't fit in there. So we're gonna have to figure out how to loosen them up and snag them around the fan. And this could, this could take a while. I'm not one of them engine nerds, but this is kind of a poor design, how they snuck her in there. That she just rubs on the steering gear box nonstop. This hose has been rubbing there. We're not gonna find the lower or the upper rad hose anywhere. So I gotta protect on these. This one's just smoking. Anyway, down there you can't see it. There's a belt that also runs across the face of the charging whirler here. And I think maybe one of these two bolts loosens that one up. The great news is the vacuum pump's even worse. There's like no room. Absolutely none rooms. And we think that there's a couple bolts on the bottom of this and you gotta slide the whole unit. Then we can fish this one off and fish the other one off. Well, I say fish it off. I'm just gonna, you know, cut on it. But getting the new ones on, I gotta go around this. And there's stuff that has to be done. So those are those two bolts I was alluding to. I think we just loosen them up, slide this over, and then, oh, there is two belts on there. One just rides over top of it, and the other one goes to the power steering. So, I only have one of those. Oh, well. Got this belt on after a fight. Of course, it's too big. We're gonna ignore that. We're at the end of the throw down here. I think there used to be a bolt that went through the side and it's probably double nutted so you can pull this forward and back. That's gone. And I'm gonna do the right thing and not do the other ones because technically this should run the fan and the old WP, you know, water pump. And that's really all we need here. Even if it doesn't charge or I lose power steering, there should be nothing electrical happening unless I get the tape deck working. Whilst bending this out to stretch that belt, I must have hit this line down here and knocked it loose. We're just about to test this because diesel was just spraying out when I was testing how loose the belt was. But then the battery went dead. That's weird. So that's reboiling for the 17th time and we're kind of just waiting at this point. Why don't you go ahead and crack that open and see if we got any juice. Oh yeah. A little bit? Just on the back front's good. Oh yeah, I just wonder, should a guy run a rag through there and wipe her up a little bit maybe? Oh, we'll just put her on. Oh, top her off, call it good. Oh, she was empty, empty. It's actually a good sign. The front had juice in it. That means hopefully there's not a line burst or something like that. 
what we have to watch for now is these soft lines from like the frame to the you know thing they get soft sometimes you hit the brake it'll allow pressure and fluid through but then it's constricted and won't let it back and it locks up the caliper that happened on the Cadillac that I did so I did the right thing and just vice gripped her off basically but to see what the pedal tells us now I don't think I've actually even hit the pedal before oh yeah there's something I mean it feels like it bottoms out but oh now it's building pressure I'll be might be something there Instead of running the Lone Wolf 6000 around here and dangling on her, I think I'm going to rig in a push button or something. And that's just going to jump 12 volt in that starter solenoid there. That's all that trigger's doing. And we'll come in here and make some really nice custom plate or something to mount this. Because I don't want to drill any holes in the dash in this. But there's some hooks down there and some stuff. We'll get a little creative, but we're going to make this look really nice. And probably end up being temporarily permanent for a while until I can figure out what's going on in the column there. Well, the switch is in. Looking good. Well, she runs. Expert start switch. Doesn't get hot yet, but we haven't put any load on it yet, so we're not going to cross that one off the list yet. Leaks profusively. That's fine. Fix most of the diesel leaks. We know that the flywheel isn't stuck to the engine because otherwise we wouldn't have neutralis. But the big question is, do we actually have a functioning clutch? And hopefully one or two of five total gears, reverse included. So I'm gonna jump in, fire this thing up with a new button, start rolling some gears and see if it moves. If I get her going fast enough, I might even touch the brake pedal. Either that's gonna work or we're gonna take out this antique wood stove. But I think it likes just a touch of glow plug. So we're going to do that. Switch. Headliner is down. All right. Went in the first gear. Oh, yeah. Second. Yep. Third. Yep. Fourth. Yep. R. Oh, yeah. Try some brake. Oh. It stopped. Also, something fell off the ceiling in here. Where's R at again? There it is. I mean, not the best brakes, but I don't want to jinx myself. Probably more gooder than I've ever had on a Revival. But I also just said that about the Buick and ended up having none brakes by the time I got home. Hear that Turbski? All right. We are getting very, very close to stabbing this thing on the road. But I think first, I might vacuum it just a touch. Bring down the hantavirus warning level about 14 degrees. Where's that vacuum I was ruining? Stop raining finally after 17 months. We needed it though. It was hot and crispy up here. I'm gonna back her out, ease it into the sun there. First time this has moved under its own power in almost two decades. This passenger seat looks absolutely perfect. Too bad the other one doesn't look like that. Might just need some pressure washing in here or run a hose through there. I 
idea what flavor, but I've got some sort of commercial degrease, get get the grease off of it stuff. Sprayed pretty near everywhere on this rig. So I think instead of dragging the hose out, throwing that through the window, hooking it up to the washing machine, this is gonna ease it downtown. And they got a self-spray thing here, and we'll just spray this thing out gently. Put some lipstick on a pig here, but boy, is she looking sharp. It's gonna take 17.9 months to dry, but that's okay. Look at that dash already coming around. It's like a humid hotbed in here right now, but I'm gonna let the windows down, just kind of let her dry out a little bit. Might go pick up some new seat covers for this after that dries out, but it's looking, you know, it's coming around. It's looking better already. They can either shine juice on this or might just get the buffing wheels out, buff it late on it a little bit. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. I'm gonna address a couple things on this rig. I don't typically bother doing this if I'm driving them home within, you know, 100, 200 miles, but I've got 600 miles to try to make with this thing tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the fluid levels in the axles front and rear and maybe even the old gear selector upper box and I just made an appointment to get tires put on tomorrow morning right before we leave these might maybe ish make it but I believe they're five on 5.5 bolt pattern I don't have another wheel I don't have a spare basically so these are really weather checked and they're from 2003 I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get some different tires put on this thing just maximize our potential of maybe maybe we'll make it no probably not even close got the croissant wrench in here those seem to work good and script this stuff out oh yeah looks like mud and it's right at the top perfect the rear is also full Moses just coming right out well, get back in here then. I'm trying. I just, I can't. How do, where's the threads? How do you start it? Oh, there we go. No big deal. Started loading everything in. Basically going to get her ready. So tomorrow after we get tires on, we just hit the road. I'm having to boil the battery again. So I might go down to the parts store and pick a new one up. Because that's going to be really inconvenient on the road. Because not gonna have that maybe get some seat covers maybe some air freshening thingies not sure we got the new tires on her I did put another battery in it yeah we got about 18 miles on it or something like that brought it out here to the farm to say goodbye to everybody and I got a passenger today So since it has brakes, we've got brand new tires, seat belt seems to be working just fine. I went ahead and agreed to let Bentley come with me. He's always begged me and I've always said no for safety reasons, but this only goes 50-55 and like I say, we've got brakes and tires and the seat belt. We've got a booster seat in there all buckled up. 
You ready to hit the road, dude? All right, what, 13, 14 hours? Yeah. Oh, goodness. It's 100 degrees today, or supposed to be. Beautiful day. Let's hit the road. Jessica and my other boys are in the going to town pickup, you know. So the good news is, if this breaks down and it's something I can't fix, we're just gonna scoot it into the ditch, leave the keys in it, jump in the other one, and head home, huh? But we're gonna try to avoid that at all costs. See if we can get this old girl home. 600 miles in a diesel. This will be interesting. Another thing to consider with this heat is whether or not this thing's going to want to stay cool. The little tiny trip out here it seemed to do fine, but it's just now really heating up. That huge hole in the back is kind of nice for ventilation, but not convenient in gravel roads. That dirt is kind of circulational in here. Whew. A little rough on the eyeballs. I don't know if you can see that, but the dust is just up there. Seems to drive pretty darn good with these new tires. It's not pulling or swerving anywhere. That'll be nice. It gets a little exhausting when you let go and it goes like that, you know. Coming up to the new highway here. This will be the first time on the highway in almost two decades. My biggest question is, is this thing even going to do 65, 70? If not, it's going to be a long day. Oh, it is so godless. It's not shaking. I got no blinkerage. Maybe if I manually do it. See what my app says for speed. I got this thing wound up tighter than my wife's purse strings. 59.60. It is going to be a long, long trip. I just pulled the fast idle cable out. Cruise control. Now we just sit here for... That's fine. We made it to Berthold, our first stop. I just want to top her off with diesel, see what we've been using so far. And I want to check for any major leaks or anything like that. I'm also going to crawl underneath and see if I can get the speedometer to work. I'm hoping that the cable's just unhooked. I forgot to look the other day. Because I don't have a tack to reference or anything. And this thing sounds like an international 1086 just wide open and it's straight pipe. And, you know, there's no floor and the windows leak and all of that stuff. So basically what I'm saying is there's noise in here. You can't really tell what's going on. I don't want to be looking at my phone non-stop. So fill it up. Little dude wants a Yahoo or something, Yoo-Hoo's, I don't know, apparently it's chopped them out. And then we'll pull off over here on the side and I'll crawl underneath quick to see what we got going on. I'm gonna try to show you guys this. When I fill it, it's full. So it's gonna bring diesel around the overflow tube and back into the filler neck. Color of diesel is usually like a yellowish green, that color, but watch this. Yeah. There is some nasty, nasty diesel in there still that we've got to work through. Engine's staying cool so far, and I didn't see any major leaks or anything like that so far, knock on wood, thankfully. Well, the speedo cable is definitely hooked up and leaking. Also, the pinion seal is shot, so I'm gonna do the right thing and just pretend I didn't see that. Just, you know, keep on moving. Also, take advantage of your surroundings whenever you can. These make a real nice ramp. Okay. 
758 billion miles that way. Hot stuff pizza! It's hot and also pizza! I don't think that's right, but here's a pizza for you. Thank you. You're welcome. What'd you get? Oh, Canadian bacon? Yep. Ooh. I got a uh, kitchen sink. My favorite. Oh, fuel gauge doesn't work. That's fine. Carrington, fueled up, still no leaks, nothing at all. I'm gonna do the math additionals here on the MPGs in a second. I'm also gonna check the lug nuts on this thing, make sure nothing's gotten loose there, because I had to put new ones on when I put the wheels on. The other ones were so rusted and rotten. I had to use a torch, it was a nightmare. But still have some oil pieces, I guess I could check that. I also want to put a fuel filter in this sooner than later. I couldn't find one there in that small town I was in. So I'll probably be calling ahead, see if I can pick one of them up and have it on the counter. Other than that, it's going very slow and extremely hot. I'm talking like Shania Twain in the 90s hot. This is just a little alarming. Yeah, it burned every single piece of oil in here. So, I'm gonna just put that back down in there. I'm gonna have to figure out, maybe a guy could find somewhere in town here. Ooh, we got a liquor store. And uh, focus, oh yeah, oil. Maybe a guy could find where to get some more oil. I have a little bit more, I'm gonna dump that in now. That is hot. And then we'll try to get some more, because boy, that's like eight quarts. And how many miles? Not good. Luckily, I grabbed this big two and a half gallon jug, a T6. It took about a gallon, a gallon and a quarter, and yeah, now it's right on the money. So I'll have a little bit left over. We're gonna have to keep an eye on that though. Goodness gracious. Well, a guy has to assume it's one of four things, basically. The oil pressure sending unit is bad, likely, highly. The engine was still making enough oil pressure somehow to register on this gauge because low is maybe one pound and high is 15 pieces. I don't know, but it's not a lot on the gauge, but it said it was building some pressure. Or four, I don't know. I just don't know. Let's fire it up, see what it says. It's slowly coming up, but it's not a lot. Same oil pressure. I don't hear any knocking on heaven's door though, so we're just gonna. Since a guy can't go 75, 80 anyway, I turned off avoid highways on my computer pocket machine, and it's gonna take us through a bunch of two lane blacktop here, headed east instead of going straight down that interstate, which is the best way to travel anyway. And we're actually gonna go through a couple small towns. I haven't even been in, I don't think. This is gonna
stretch a little bit. Guys should start bringing a fishing pole and some tackle. See any fish? Nope. Nothing yet, huh? What a beautiful day. Oh, there's a beach right there. There's one right there. Just hanging out. Dock fishing is usually pretty darn good in North Dakota. Oh, there's another beach over there too. I'll be. Well, that was a nice little break. Got to stretch a little bit. Got the back waterfall dried down a little. Let's hit the road. We got, I think, 75, 80 more miles to Fiergo. And then we'll decide if we're gonna stay there or not, huh? Okay. I lost my SGs. Have you seen them? Really no way to get around this here part of the highway system. So we're jammed on the interstate just doing the thing. Luckily there's some pretty heavy traffic, so we're only going, I don't know, 45, which is just fine. 300, I don't know, 330, 340 miles. Here we go. There's a place beyond the silver moon. If we drive, then we can get this soon. To Fiergo, and I think we're going to shut it down here for tonight. My little human here is getting pretty hot and tired and thirsty, and I am too. There's an alien video game thing down here. We might go check that out. I don't know. But in the morning, we'll try to find a fuel filter quick, do some maintenance, and then we'll hit the road. I took the fuel filter off this morning, which sits right underneath here. Well, Riley's can get one, but not for a couple hours. It must be coming from the warehouse. It's these canister type filters, same as the oil filter. So that tells us that this is an early SD33. Well, this is an SD33T, but I'm thinking in early 79, they had the canister type filters. And then the last few put in in 80 or made very late 79 had the actual spin-on filters, oil and fuel. So these are a little bit harder to get. It doesn't look terribly bad, but there is a bunch of sand and sediment and stuff in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some brake clean and just rejuvenate all this, stick her back together. That's all cleaned up, put back on. I actually found some huffing gas in my tool tote there, so I use that instead. That'll make this thing gallop. Now, the second scary part, first being hopefully all those O-rings kind of hold up again, but we got to prime this with this guy here. And this is really crispy and could go wrong. If we break these seals or whatever's in here, spraying and everything, then we're really in trouble. But this is just like a tractor. Should be able to fill that filter. Prime the system again. I can hear it. Feeling a little bit of pressure so far. All right, we'll give her a shot this morning. It's all primed up. We'll high idle it and go look for leaks. Uh, 
Well, guy's in her now. I was just going to take a peek at this ignition situation and started digging in. This is that rod. If you remember that Buick boat tail we just did, this is the rod that's missing out of the column that runs the key. And when I roll the key forward, you can see that rod moving there. Well, this ignition switch, my hunch is the spring mechanism is busted in there. So when we roll it all the way forward, there should be a spring that kicks it back off of that start position and it's busted. Can't really get to this thing. So I'm gonna take the steering wheel column collar off. These four bolts here is two on each side. Then I could drop these two, remove this plate, and the column will drop low enough to where I can get in there and see if I can get that switch out. Do I already have one? Nope, we'll figure that out later. Now a guy can easily get access in here. I gotta push it over, get this little ratchet in these two bolts here and then there should just be a clip to undo and we can get that out. Well I tested this with the old Leatherman. You stick it in here. It's got spring. So this appears to be operating correctly. It's most likely going to be this rod. That looks like a bend that's supposed to be there for the tilt wheel but might not have enough throw in this rod or something so I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Well I got her fixed. Had to gently modulate that rod. I did that by just severely bending it. Had to shorten the throw on that. It's a little sticky when you start it now because there's so much pressure in here. But it's gonna work. Guy's just gonna have to be ready to ease back on the ignition. Now I can unhook that thing and maybe this won't get stolen, huh? Yeah. Someone did a study, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Mythbusters or something. Anyway, this power service is really the only diesel injector cleaner and stuff that actually does anything. This treats up to 100 gallons, so, you know, just put the whole thing in. That'll clean it up a little bit. Last thing I did was checked on Earl here, and it was a quart, quart and a half low. So I'm rebuilding the engine currently by throwing this Lucas Oil stabilizer in. I don't know, it's got a flag. And record flag it's got to work right and then I'm going across the street I think there's a hoo hot over there grab some brunch and then we're hitting the road I think we got 341.2 miles are you ready or what We made it, just pulled in my driveway. No major breakdowns and no tickets. That's a huge, huge victory. This thing did great. Sat in the weeds out there on that farm for almost two decades. Started relatively easily. Didn't have to do a whole lot to it. And I've got a ton more planned for this thing, so stay tuned. And I don't ask a lot, but maybe consider subscribing. I mean, it's really easy, it's free. What do you got to lose? Thanks everyone for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.